Long live your turtle here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a pet turtle tank. Now, I'm talking about your common pet turtles, like your sliders, your map turtles, your side necks, your painteds, and other semi-aquatic turtles like those species. It can even branch out to more complex species, but just make sure that whatever species turtle you have or you're thinking about getting, you know all the specifics that they need. Now I want to give a little disclaimer because pet stores will sell you all sorts of products and most of those products are pretty much useless. A lot of them are good for really small turtles, hatchlings, and those one-year-old turtles. But beyond that, they are not set up for a typical size turtle. Like the one you're going to buy at a pet store, it has to be at least four inches in the United States. And once that turtle is four inches, a lot of the products they sell are null and void. You need to come up with something a little different but not totally different. You don't have to do it completely yourself. It's not totally DIY, but we can do better than what the store products offer. We can make something a lot more adequate for your pet turtle. I have in here my Red Ear Slider Herald right now. This is a 40 gallon breeder, and this is gonna be your starter tank for pretty much every pet turtle that you're gonna buy at your pet store. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to put this together, and while I'm doing it, I'm gonna get into more details to the decisions I'm making and why I'm making those decisions and why they're gonna be great for your turtle. Now I want you to notice two really important things before we get started. First of all, I'm using all of my tank full of water for my turtle. That's called optimizing your turtle's living space. It's a term I always like to use because I always see people doing these strange half full tank setups for their turtles, especially sliders that want a lot of water, but they're not giving it to them. They're not using all the water that their tank can provide. I also want you to notice that these are all basically products that you can get yourself. I only slightly modified this basking area you'll see here, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But this is basically stuff you can just buy and put in your tank and be all set and ready to go, which is my goal here. I don't want to drown you with DIY projects that you might not be comfortable with. I want you to be able to go to the store, pick up these things, and put together your awesome turtle tank. And then the last thing, this turtle tank setup that I'm gonna go over today, this can be scaled. This can be scaled to different size setups. This is a 40 gallon, like I said, it's gonna be your basic starter setup, but this could be scaled to much larger tanks, 75 gallon, 125, 150 gallon tanks. Just keep all the main pointers in mind for whatever size tank you have. Let's get to putting together our tank here from the bottom up, from when it was just a nice glass aquarium to what it is now, let's get to it. All right, here is that 40 gallon breeder we were talking about. It just has water in it right now. 40 gallon breeder, great tank to start with because it's wide. It's called a breeder tank because it's used to breed fish, so it's wider than your typical aquarium tank. However, it's great for turtles because turtles are like little pancakes, so they're wide as well. Now I'm pointing to the stand that I have right now for this setup. This is just a demo setup for this video. Do not recommend the sand I'm using. That's just a piece of plywood on two sawhorses. Don't do that. Get a real stand, get one of the metal ones they have for this 40 gallon specifically, or use a sturdy piece of furniture that fully fits the footprint of this tank. That's going to look a lot better as well, not what I have it on currently. Now once you have your tank, once you have your stand, the first thing I want to do is figure out the substrate I'm going to use for the tank. Right now it's a bare bottom tank, that means it's just the glass, there's nothing there. However, for turtles, I suggest using either river stones, river pebbles you might call them, or a sand. And the sand I'm showing is a pool filter sand. Now, you probably notice those are two big bags that do not seem like pet products, and you're correct. Those are hardware store products. Uh, the pebbles are from the landscaping section of the hardware store, and the sand is from the pool section. And this is just a cost-saving measure. Buying bulk like this at a hardware store is much, much cheaper than buying this all at a pet store. Just make sure you know what you're getting at the hardware store. Don't just pick up any bag of rocks. Make sure it's just river stones, nothing else added to it, or just sand. You could do play sand, but don't get any kind of sand that has any additives in it. And make sure that you know what you're getting. Otherwise, you've created a toxic environment for your turtle. And then I'm using the pebbles today. And one really important rule with pebbles is get stones that are larger than your turtle's head. That way they can't eat them. If they eat them, they can become impacted, which is basically a bunch of pebbles just blocking the intestines, and your turtle will die. So it's either sand, which is really small and will pass through them, or large stones. And like I said, the tank is full of water, which I wouldn't typically do without the substrate already being installed in the tank. I just did this because of time constraints that I had outside of what typical practice I would follow. So if you're going to do this, I would suggest putting your substrate in first and then filling it with water. Now I just have to be a little more careful with splashing myself with water and making a mess, you know? 
All right, so while I finish up here, I think it's important to talk about why a substrate is important for your turtle, and everyone likes a top three, so I'm gonna do a top three reasons. Number one, it's more natural. Yeah, I can leave a bare bottom tank for my turtle, but that's just not what a turtle environment is like. They live in ponds, and they live in rivers, and just having glass on the bottom of a tank is not gonna be a natural setting for your turtle. Number two, and probably the most important, so it should be number one, is it provides enrichment for your turtle. You've probably heard this word a lot at zoos, where the zookeepers are trying to provide enrichment to these zoo animals at the park, and that's basically keeping them entertained, you might say, stimulating them, keeping them busy, keeping them thinking, keeping them on their feet, and that's just good animal welfare. It keeps them, their minds healthy, and it keeps them from depression, so Keeping something like stones and sand gives something that your turtle can easily forge around and push around and look what's around that stone, look what's around that sand pebble, what's under there, dig, 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 and it keeps their mind occupied. And you'll notice them doing this a lot. Last but not least, and most obvious, number three, and the most selfish, is looks. You want your tank to look great, right? It's going to be the centerpiece of your room or the centerpiece of your hobby, or you just want to show it off to your friends, or even just pat yourself on the back. You want your tank to look like an awesome environment and doing that by adding just really natural stuff like river stones or sand really makes it pop and really makes it look like a great place for your turtle to be living. All right, my next step is installing a water heater because the water I put in there is really cold. I need to catch it up to the process I'm doing here. Now, controlling the water temperature of your tank is essential for your turtle's health because they rely on a pretty consistent water temperature. It's usually around mid 70s to low 80s and you don't really want to go much lower than that because that will trigger certain turtles to go into brumation which is where they change their body chemistry to handle low oxygen for winter type water conditions uh, and too hot is obviously just not the temperature that your turtle has adapted to and it will be very unhealthy for it. So picking a heater is pretty straightforward. Get one that's indestructible meaning it's not a glass bodied heater. It's a hard plastic or titanium and get one that is the right wattage. You want to match the wattage with the amount of water that you're heating, especially based on the amount of temperature variation that you'll expect the tank to have to overcome. So for me, this is a 200 watt heater in a 40 gallon tank, which is very typical. For a tank this size, usually they have to be vertical or horizontal and none of it can be out of the water and that's it. Up next, I want to install my aquarium background. It's a very basic product that you can get from pretty much any pet store. What you're going to want to look for is the right size. It's kind of hard to cut these. They're long pieces of plastic type paper and uh, kind of hard to cut. So get the right size or have them cut it for you for your specific tank. And that way you can just unroll it and install it. Now, a lot of these come with two designs on both sides. I really like that because you can change it up if you get bored of what you're looking at but get the right size and pick a design you like. Worst case though, you can just buy another design if you don't like it. So I just use tape here. It's really simple. All you have to do is unroll the scroll and line it up on the back of your aquarium. It doesn't stick or anything, so you have to use that tape. So only advice here is to make sure that you get out all the kinks and the bubbles before you start installing all the filtration and things hanging off the back because it's going to be a lot harder once those are there. Next up, aquarium decor. I keep this super simple for turtles because they need a lot of space in the tank. I use driftwood like I'm showing here and I don't make this complicated. I buy the driftwood from pet stores. It can be a little expensive, but you know what you're getting. It's not that easy to go pick out driftwood from the forest and then treat it correctly. Speaking of treating, you have to treat driftwood. So Follow the directions on the package that you buy your driftwood from. It usually entails boiling. But I just throw a couple pieces in there just to make it look nice and natural. Next, an extremely important feature of any turtle tank is a filter. It'll save you so much time. It'll save you money. And it'll keep your turtle in a healthy living environment if you pick the right one. But don't worry, picking the right filter actually isn't that hard as long as you follow a couple key rules. Rule number one is use a canister filter. Don't waste your time with internal filters or hang on the back filters. What I'm showing you here is a canister filter. It sits outside of your tank. It's a pressurized system, but really straightforward. It takes water from your tank. It pumps it through a bunch of filter media and then puts cleaner water back in your tank. And since I just said filter media, let's talk about it real quick. You have basically two types of filter media. 
you have your mechanical and your biological. And there's a third type, which is your chemical, but most of the time you don't actually need that. It's a good to have. But here I'm showing a top tray, and the second tray is all biological media. It's those little ceramic rings. And you'll notice those are very popular in the hobby because they harbor beneficial bacteria, which is part of the nitrogen cycle and required to keep your tank water clear. I highly suggest you look up what the nitrogen cycle is and how it makes your water clear because it's critical to you understanding how the balance of your system works. And before the next rule of thumb, let's just talk about the canister filter real quick here. So you obviously have your canister with all your trays, with all your media on the inside. But on the outside, you're going to have two inputs for hosing. And you're going to have one that's going to be taking water from your tank and putting it into the filter. And you're going to have one that's putting it back into the tank from your filter. So you just need to make sure that when you're setting up your hosing, that you're following any of the directions for that specific canister filter that you have. Just making sure that you keep that in mind because you don't want to set it up backwards. It's kind of annoying to have to disassemble everything and reassemble it the opposite way. A big tip for picking out canister filters, at least from my experience, is get ones that give you provisions of stop valves and disconnect type mechanisms for where I'm installing hosing right now because this is where you're going to take off your hosing. You don't want to take off all the hosing just to clean out the canister filter. You want to be able to disconnect those hoses and just take the body of the canister filter to your hose or your sink to clean out the media. You don't want to take off everything, but when you do this, this was a pressurized system with water going all through the tubes. If you don't have a good way to shut off that water, it's going to spill all over the floor before you pinch tubes and stuff. So I just learned that it goes a long way to spend a couple extra dollars to get the filters with those bells and whistles, making maintenance life a lot easier. And while I wrangle the hoses to set up the input and output into our tank, I'll talk about the next rule of thumb when it comes to picking out your canister filter, and that is to pick a filter that pumps six to eight times the amount of water that your tank holds. So for this setup, that's minimum 240 gallon per hour pumping filter up to around 320 gallons. So what I'm using is a Cascade 1200, which is up at 315 gallons per hour. So that's at the high end. And you can get away with the Cascade 1000 as well. So just keep that in mind when you're picking out a filter size. It's going to be way bigger than what's suggested uh, for the tank size. But you're dealing with a turtle here. Turtles are large. They're making much larger waste and they're a lot more to deal with than just fish. So remember that when you're trying to justify buying such a large filter for what seems like a tiny tank. You will definitely thank yourself later on when you're not buying new filters every couple months because it's not big enough and your water continues to be dirty and you just can't figure it out. Just go big, get the big filter. It'll save you money in the long run. But for the video, let's talk about what I did real quick with setting up the tubing. I did the intake right there and that's gonna suck your water into tubing that goes around and down into your filter. And then I have the output, which is attached to a spray bar, which is that horizontal plastic tubing that has a bunch of little holes in it. That's great for installing all of the tubes on one side and still getting water to the other side of your tank, which is one way I like it. And it also evenly distributes water across pretty much your entire tank, which is nice for circulation of the water coming back in. All right, let's start this thing out. All right, plug your filter in, and you're gonna hit the prime pump. Uh, some of these filters don't have a prime pump, but some do. And what you're basically gonna do is pump it several times, and that's gonna get air to be purged from your canister filter. Remember, it's a pressurized system. You just want water in there to be pressurized, to be pushed through the system. So you wanna get all the air out, and that prime pump does that. And now you can see that water is starting to squeak out the holes in that spray bar. Don't worry though, the squeaking will stop. That's just air bubbles being pushed out. This filter will be running in no time, quietly and efficiently. All right, next is installing this hidden LED strip light. And what this is, is basically a waterproof light that can be installed underwater on the inside of my tank. And you'll see why I'm installing this type of light, but basically it's to avoid using a hood lamp. And hood lamp is a light that sits over your tank and lights up the water from the top. But you'll see that with the setup, I can't do that. So I have to use something that sits inside the tank to get that water to light up and to show 
everyone what's going on inside the tank, which of course you want. All right, the next thing I'm installing is the Thrive Elevated Basking Loft that I've modified to be more adequate for your turtle enclosure. Now, check out the video of how I modified this. It's really one of my easiest DIYs, but it's essential and it'll really improve this product. And it's one of the only products out there that I believe is good for this purpose. And what the purpose is, is it provides a basking area for your turtle and it sits on top of your tank so that your turtle still has all the water in your tank to swim around in and then can climb out of the tank to get that basking. A lot of products in the stores have like these internal basking docks that require you to empty out half the water in your tank. So you don't want to waste all that space for your turtle that could be swimming water. You want to get something that sits on top of the tank and this is the only product that fits this 40 gallon wide type tank. And I really suggest it. It just needs those couple modifications that I show in that video. Right now I'm just showing you, I'm putting those little anchor screws in that hold it in place. Now this Thrive Basker was specifically designed for a 40 gallon breeder tank. So it also has this extension screen piece and I'm showing you that you can just remove certain parts of it because those aren't gonna be useful at all for an actual turtle tank. I don't know why they give you such a little space to put filter tubing and wires through. So I'm just showing you, get rid of that little plastic support grommet. It helps open up a little more space for you to slide all of those internal features through. And you can even open it up with a pair of uh, wire cutters if you really need to, and I would actually suggest doing so. I just wanna show you that you don't actually need to if you're using the exact setup I have. You can still fit it all through that hole without a problem. Of course, for your setup, I wouldn't get the filter running at this point because you're gonna to need to take the tubing out and slide it through this hole because everything needs to go through that hole in the screen I just showed you. So just don't have the filter going and don't have the heater on. Turn all that on when you have all the setup ready to go. But of course you wanna cover the open side of the tank because turtles are absolute escape artists and will take advantage of open areas that they can climb out of the tank. And since you have the water to the top, you need to cover the top. All right, last thing I'm gonna do here is install our basking lamp. And that's gonna include a 100 watt mercury vapor bulb like I'm showing here and a deep dome. This is a standard size and it fits that mercury vapor bulb. It has a reflective inside that helps direct all of that great heat and UV radiation down where your turtle needs it. And I'm installing it on the modified Thrive Basker. I added a adjustable lamp stand, which is actually a really cheap but amazing little stand that you can move your lamp up and down because it's hard to get perfect temperature and that UV that you need right where your turtle is. But with that stand, you can easily move it up and down. Again, watch that video on how I modified this basker. It's really easy and something that anyone could do. And really quickly, I know it's tempting in the store, don't use those mini deep dome combo lamps. They're not the best. They're really hard to match the heat and UVB bulb together to be adequate for your turtle's health. Try to stick with a mercury vapor or a heat and larger standard deep dome and larger UVB bulb. All right, when my water has a lot of chlorine or chloramine in it, I add RepTiSafe, which basically neutralizes those chemicals and makes it safe for your turtle to swim around in. Of course, chloramine is a known irritant for turtles and fish, and you don't want them to have to swim around in that, knowingly hurting them. And for this video, food, keep it straightforward. Buy pellets from the store. It's basically your dog food for turtles. It's everything they need in one little pellet. And some other things you could do is some snacks, some fun things for your turtle to play around in. That's this cuddle bone I'm showing here, but you have to take the backing off and that just you need to scrape off with a knife. It's kind of difficult, but that's a fun thing for your turtle to play around in. Gives them some nutrients as well. All right, we have everything set up now. Last thing you want to do is check your temperatures before you add your turtle. Check the water temperature. Check your basking area temperature. Make sure that is adequate for your turtle's basking needs. And also check that your bulb, whatever it's rated for for UVI, is correct for your type of turtle. So like a Ferguson Zone 3, you want to make sure your bulb is high enough to reach that. And finally, what my turtle Harold has been waiting for, just kidding, voluntold to go from a bigger tank to the small tank, 
to show you how it all works. Open the lid to the basking area. That's the easiest way in and just dropped Harold right in, right down the ramp. <laughs> Instant insertion into this great new tank that she gets to explore. I'm going to add a couple fish as well. These fish have been living with my pet turtles for a while. But any fish I add to a tank, I really call feeder fish, even though I want them to live with the turtle. They're going to be food eventually, most likely. So never get attached to fish you're adding to a tank. I do have several videos on what fish are great to add to a turtle tank if you want them to stick around a little longer. But in general, if you're going to feed fish to your turtle, just make it a snack. Don't make it their meal source. And that's it. A couple things to consider. Make sure your turtle figures out the basking area in the first two weeks. They should be up there soaking up the sun, regulating their body temperature. Otherwise, you might need to modify some things. And make sure you do water changes every two weeks, about 50%. Check the filter every month. And just make sure everything stays clean. There you go. And that's it to your basic turtle tank setup. Thanks for watching. If you want to see DIY videos, maybe on how to make something different for the top of your tank or for other turtle related cool little projects, check out my channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Thanks for watching and long live your turtle.